Uh, Owen Benjamin, you are you uh, work some time in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, you were you were scriptwriter for the Louder uh, from Crowder show. Uh, uh, formerly fr- good friends with Joe Rogan, uh, and you actually wrote the the song for Tommy Ro- Robinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had always thought that you guys hated Jesus. Muslims reading the Quran, strapping bombs to themselves, and running into a concert to kill white people. I can't believe I fell for that lie. This is the day. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace, peace be unto you, welcome to the Dean Show, I'm Eddie, your host. Now a few weeks back, we did a program, a reaction video, because we heard that a gentleman by the name of Owen Benjamin had some very nice things to say about Islam and Muslims. Now who's Owen Benjamin? Owen Benjamin was the script writer for Louder for Crowder, Worked in Hollywood. Also was friends with Joe Rogan. Has been on the Joe Rogan podcast. He also wrote the song for one of the leading Islamophobe, Islam haters in the world. For uh, Tommy Hobbins, Robbins. So you can imagine who he was rolling with. And the kind of things he used to say. So when we heard that he had some very nice things to say, we had some nice things to say back to him. So we did this video for him. We sent him some love. He sent some love back. Now guess who is with us here on this episode of The Dean Show? That's right. No other than Owen Benjamin. That's right. Here on The Dean Show coming up. Mr. Everybody. Please make some noise for the very funny, my good friend, Mr. Owen Benjamin. Hello. What's up, brother? How are you? How you doing, Good. Owen? How you been? How you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. I'm Thank excited. You. Thanks for uh, accepting the uh, the call. Of course. Of course. Nice background there. Oh, yeah. This is my uh, part of my garden. I was just every time I open packages that people send me, I just uh, I just burn the the wrappers just so it doesn't accumulate. So we got some uh, some sheep, some goats. No so, way, dude! That's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm really. I just had some goat's milk this morning. <laughs> what kind of goats? Uh, no, I the the goats. My goats. We don't. I don't have no goats right now. I, right now, I have sheep. And as far as the goat's milk from, I don't know if you've heard of Family Farms. I so, haven't now. So okay, you know it's ironic. And we might just we we'll just get into it. Uh, it's ironic that Coca Cola and Pepsi and you know drinking one of these a day can increase your chances of diabetes by they say thirty percent. But it, real milk, raw milk, is illegal. <laughs> How about that? It is, right? It's crazy, isn't it? That's, that's not why the only way to do it is just do it yourself. You know. So what happens is they have the co-ops. So they have these co-ops. Family Farm is a co-op, and then they bring the milk to the church. So they have this church here. You go there, you sign up, uh, and then uh, every two weeks they bring the milk. So you can order raw uh, cow's milk or goat's milk. But I've never myself uh, milked uh, the goats that we've had. I've never done that. But I, but I was listening. I went to Tractor Supply Store after I heard you sp- speaking about something about how you can actually get the uh, – you were referring to people being distracted, uh, but the goats, when you want to milk them – uh, yeah. You just have their, uh, you know, their heads in, 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 what is that called? I don't know. I don't know what it's called, but the whole, the, the metaphor is so Powerful. applicable to modern society where the goat is eating from the little tray, from the little treats, and then you just put this iron thing over their neck, and they don't even notice, and then you're just in the back milking them. <laughs> and and I, was, I was looking at it, I'm like, that reminds me of a, of, of a, of a, a tub of popcorn. Like when people are just at the movies... And they're getting their soul milked almost with uh, the the fear propaganda and the uh, trauma based mind control of watching these movies and these television shows, where you know there's people that are now controlling others' minds and dreams and perceptions as they just eat from a tub of corn. And I was looking at this goat and I'm like, I'm a goat. And I'm like, <laughs> who's milking me? <laughs> Pretty funny. Did you make your own contraption or you bought it? My neighbor made it for me. He's uh he's good with metal. He uh he's got a blowtorch and all that stuff. Oh okay. So, 
Yeah. All right. So yeah. So I'm I'm really into eating real food, avoiding fake food. You know, because to uh, the way to the the key to good health is eating the the food that human beings been intended to eat, and that's the food that the Creator has given us, not the processed junk, garbage, fake foods. We call exactly, it. exactly, man. And it's um uh the goat. It's interesting you said that about goat milk because goat milk is is objectively healthier for human beings than than cow milk. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it, it doesn't trigger lactose intolerance in people, and it also has the, the, good, the good bacteria in it that helps, uh, especially children, develop strong immune systems. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm really into, um, I would never uh, drink any of the conventional, you know, the FDA, it's, it's ironic, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, they have as the mo number one allergenic food is actually milk. So I was thinking, how could... Uh, this milk that the creator has given us, how can this be causing people to get sick? But it's not the real milk. It's no. the fake, pr exactly. pasteurized, homogenized, the fake, uh, uh, fake milk. Yeah, it's the same with corn. You know, yeah. it's like we have all this genetically modified, hyper, high fructose corn syrup stuff. Like we have, we grow non-GMO uh, corn and it's delicious and it's healthy and it's great. And it's the old corn. Like corn used to be smaller Carrots used to be purple. You know, it's like a lot of this food is just, uh, uh, it's, it's almost like how Satan mimics. You know, it's a mimicry. It's a, it's a mockery of uh, the creator's food, as you so eloquently put it. And a lot of the FDA, man, a lot of those guys are like Rosa, Rosicrucians and weirdos. They, they're all about poisons and, and potions and stuff, you know? 80%, I heard 80% of, of the G uh, corn is GMO. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, and it's, and it, but old school maize is uh, is not is is healthy. You know, it's from the creator, as you put it. And uh, and that's and that's. I just read something today that citric acid is from black mold. I used to think it was from oranges. You know, like uh, when you read in the label that citric acid, they extract that out of mold. You know, it's getting very uh, very intense out there. Guys, we are just jumping right into it. I'm with Owen Benjamin, and the conversation is flowing. I just, we just jumped right into it. Uh, yeah. Owen, thank you so much for being with us here on The Dean Show. I really appreciate it. Just to kind of give a, a little bit of a breakdown, please correct me if I'm ever wrong. Uh, Owen Benjamin, you, are, you uh, work some time in Hollywood. Yep. Uh, you were you were scriptwriter for the Louder uh, from Crowder show, uh, uh, formerly fr good friends with Joe Rogan, uh, and you actually wrote the the song for Tommy Ro Robinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, me and the Bears. Shout out to the Bears. But uh, you know, it was uh, it was a group effort, and we wanted to just get people. Um, you know, I, I saw a man that I thought was speaking honestly to uh, the problems in England. And so we always support that. And then, you know, uh, it was revealed that, you know, he wasn't quite being as honest as I once thought, but you know, whatever, it's all good. He's, he's not very tall. You touched a lot of hearts. You touched a lot of Muslims' hearts, brother. And when I say Muslim, look, by definition, because we say, I just want to define these words because if I say Muslim, someone thinks, oh, that's the guys from Never Forget 9-11. That's the guys uh, uh, who, you know, who are about to blow us up, the boogeyman coming to get you. But Owen, when we say Muslim, Muslim, if you, if you define the word, it simply means one, male or female who has chosen to acquire peace by submitting to the owner of peace, the creator of the heavens and earth. So when I say Muslim, I want to remove that from anyone's mind that's, uh, that's, that's listening. So when you said, you said my main thing is in one of your talks, uh, you said my main thing here is to help so many people who hate Muslims uh, uh, who are withstanding e evil, these beautiful people. My main thing is to help people not hate so many good-hearted Muslims that are w withstanding evil. And they are the type of people you, you want to root for. These scholarly, beautiful Muslim people. Don't let the media paint, you know, a fifth of the planet as people that deserve to be bombed as a sacrifice. Well, so you, we want to we want to help with that. We want to help yeah, because there's a lot yeah. of a lot of hate out there. And go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot of programming that I've realized has happened in America of the anti-Muslim programming because we all know there's Pharisees in every religion there's some bad muslims some bad christians and bad True, jews yes. and everything but that whole um you know just the boogeyman that you're referring to i over the course of my life as i've cleaned up my life you know i i stopped drinking not that i had a drinking problem but i just i wasn't going to do the wizardry on myself like it's just five beers to relax <laughs> the more i just got sin away from me the more i could see clearly and 
the way I judge people is let your yes mean yes, let your no mean no is very important to me. And I started realizing that I had more in common with some of these Muslims than I did a lot of these um, uh, converged Christians, Christian in name only. You know, they're they're blaspheming. They're saying Eve was transgender and, you know, all this insane stuff. They have a, a rainbow flag in front, you know, promoting sodomy and stuff. And I'm like, well, that Muslim family is just having a bunch of kids and they seem like they uh, are very honest people. I'm like, what is going on? Because I used to think that Muslims were the boogeyman. And there are some that are Muslim and name only, as we all know. But it's not something that really changed my perspective was when a Muslim friend of mine, I heard him say, Jesus, peace be upon him. And I had always thought that you guys hated Jesus, you know, and that was and, and that blew my mind because I listened to Ben Shapiro on Joe Rogan talk about how Jesus Christ was um, a common criminal and was killed for rebelling against Rome, which is this insane statement. And then my Muslim friend would say, Jesus, peace be upon him. And I was like, huh, that kind of made it through the programming. And to me, it isn't this big theological thing. It's like how you and I, before we started the show, in the beginning, we're just talking about goat milk and what's, <laughs> you know, and what's in food. And, and that is what we're facing in the future is, uh, you know, guys like me and you are trying to eat healthy. We're trying to have families. We're trying to honor our creator and uh, we have more in common than I do with a lot of these materialists that seem to only honor themselves and they um, they speak lies and they uh, are selfish and they they've they've almost like accepted this this world of, of self gratification and sin. You know, it's almost like the lowercase I before every Apple product. It's mm -hmm. it's narcissism with no but you're still lowercase, you know? Yeah. And so that's changed my mind about uh Muslims. And I think another thing that people don't realize is it's not like a race, you know, like when someone says Muslim, it's not um, a lot of times people think Arabs and they think a specific group of Arabs. And then and, and that's just not true at all. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I'm at today. Yeah. All, all the population, if you look at how many Muslims from around the world, you know, you got more Muslims in Indonesia, Malaysia. You know, again, a Muslim could be Polish, Italian, American. I was born here. My parents are from uh, the Balkans, from Europe. Uh, so it's it's not like uh, many people have that stereotype. Oh, a Muslim, other Arab, you know. Well, yeah, and all the false. Uh, the moon landing really got me going on on the ability of of people to lie because I think a lot of people can't fathom uh, the scope of some of these lies that that kept us in these thirty year wars with people that we have no business being over there, and some like the Ariana Grande concert, like. Now that I realize that it's not just Muslims reading the Quran, strapping bombs to themselves and running into a concert to kill white people, I can't believe I fell for that lie. You know, it's 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 these traumatic events are made so that the local populations will continue with these wars, you know, and the wars. They, they benefit no one except for the people that are profiting from the war. It's almost like building sandcastles. With the with the tides, you know, it's only benefiting the people in the Sandcastle Union, you know, and, and so much American life, so much uh, life in the Middle East is just unnecessarily sacrificed at the altar of greed. And I just, um, you know, I just think it's it's pretty wild just to grow and see. And I think becoming a father, you really your instincts kick in with other men mm -hmm. where you mm -hmm. see another man and you're like, is that a threat to my family? And so many you know, devout Muslims, Muslims that honor uh, the creator, the God of truth, the God, are not a threat to my family. And I feel it instinctively. Mm -hmm. And then I'll see someone who's a liar and someone who's a materialist. And I'm like, that person's not allowed in my home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> talk, talk to us about Santa Claus. <laughs> You Santa talked Claus. about you. You mentioned Santa. You you mentioned that was one of the rabbit holes. <laughs> well, Santa Claus. I think it's pre-programming for uh for government spying agencies. <laughs> Where it's like he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. It's like, dude, I don't want to be watched by this fat man in the red suit. You know. Uh huh. So, man, wow. Yeah. So so you. you <laughs> wow. Um. So you all you 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 mentioned um the arguments. 
that are against Islam, and I'm going to, again, I'm just for the audience, I'm going to define Islam, Muslim, one who acquires peace by submitting to the owner of peace, the creator. Islam is the action of acquiring peace by submitting your will to the creator. So you mentioned that the arguments of Islam are starting to become so absurd a fantasy, you know, and yeah. then Bret Hart and, and CNN, Fox News, they conveniently, they don't tell you that actually Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 25 times you know, actually, his, there's a whole chapter you didn't, you're uh, named uh, after his blessed mother. These things, they conveniently, they don't mention that you have to say, peace be upon him. Like, you know, this caught your attention when we say, Jesus, peace be upon him. They don't yeah. mention these things, but, you know, suddenly that, you know, uh, it's against uh, uh, having relations outside of marriage. You know, the, uh, these uh, porn, uh, interest, usury, all these things, right? But when it comes down to um, the, the other things, like of Jesus or anything, uh, the commonalities, they don't mention. They never mention the commonalities. And they also, I have a lot of respect because the, the church I'm looking at in my area that's done the best against um, the convergence is the Orthodox Church. They seem to still be against usury, sodomy, they're pro-monogamy, pro-big family, stuff like that. They A lot of people aren't mentioning that a lot of... Um, Islamic areas have never allowed in pornography. They, they've never allowed in uh, uh, usury. And, you know, I think that our enemy is, uh, we have a common enemy with, with the Muslims, and that is the, uh, the materialist. And I think people can get very wrapped up in the differences. You know, people get wrapped up in Christianity, the difference between Catholic and Protestant and all this stuff, and they can endlessly bicker. And it's like, well, we're on the same page that um, God is truth. God is love. God is life. We, God created us. We should uh, give gratitude to God. And uh, life is good. You know, it's like truth is good. And then from there we can build. And I think that we have so much, we have a common enemy in that, that, um, and, and they don't tell you that about Muslims. You know, Muslims, I always thought, uh, based on what I've seen on, in the media, is they just want nothing more than just to blow up a bunch of innocent people. I thought it was a, a death cult. Yeah. And, um, and it's not, you know, I, there's, there's people that call themselves Muslims that are in a death cult. There's people that call themselves Christians that are in a death cult. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's who is your master. And so, uh, and I also really like the economics, economic knowledge of a lot of Muslims. You know, I was listening to this one, uh, I don't know what, what, what they're called, the leader. Sorry for my ignorance, but um, no, 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 what are no, they no. called? The leader of the of a Muslim uh, mosque, what are they called again? Imam. You have imam. like a sheikh, an imam, yeah, uh, someone, a leader in the community, an imam, yeah. probably. He was breaking down inflation better than any <laughs> anybody I ever saw. He was like, you have a camel. He's like, in three years, your camel is now worth a donkey. And he's like, and he just kept going, and I was like, Yes. <laughs> I think uh, Islam has a really good grasp on the economics of debt and how for you guys, it's so it's ingrained in your religion that, um, you know, debt goes against Allah. And so don't do it. And, and I think that what we're facing now, um, you know, a good friend of mine, Vox Day, broke down what causes war because people used to say religion causes war. And it's he broke down that 97 percent of war is caused by debt. And so when you have these banking wars of debt, uh, that's really what's spitting in the face of our creator, not our theological differences. It's, it's more debt. It's yeah. more, you know, every U.S. dollar has $13 of debt attached to it. And you go into a lot of these churches, and I'm Christian. I've no, I, I'm, but I do have a problem with these converged churches. That's one reason why uh, I was... I, I just see a lot of Muslim families worshiping better than a lot of Christian families. And that's not a knock at Christianity. That's just saying, why won't these Christians be Christian? Like, why won't they pray every day? Why won't they, um, you know, ask God for more children and thank God when they have more children? How can someone be on, like, give their woman hormones to sterilize their womb? You know, it's just very, very shocking to me. And so a lot of the values of, um, Muslims I've grown to uh, respect as men, uh, leaders of their family. And outside of that, I don't like getting in theological fights. I don't like the endless arguments about, it almost reminds me of like Dungeons and Dragons where people are like, well, how many hit points do you have? And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, do you have gratitude towards the creator? Yeah. Do you believe in truth? Mm -hmm. You know, are you, 
will you toil in the fields for, you know, for your family? And that's, and that's uh, why my opinion on Muslims has changed over the years. For, for us and, and why uh, we started the program is specifically me as an as a American born here, um, background European in Bosnia. You've heard of Bosnia? Of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, and just to, to be a voice somewhat for, for those who are sincere and genuine and they want to they wanna learn, they want to know, and just to share, just to share the information, to try to clear up uh, much of this muck that's out there. And I'll give you an example. Like there was this pastor, I was giving a talk in, in Colorado, and afterward, this was a Juma, Juma Hudba every Friday. Uh, people will, will congregate. And then there was a pastor there. He, he approached me. I didn't know he's a pastor until he introduced himself. He came up. He had visited before. He introduced himself. He was an elderly man named David. He was about probably in his late 60s, early 70s. Very nice man. He came up and he introduced himself. And we spoke. Then we sat down and we talked. And a few of us, you know, got together. And, um, and, I, and then I, uh, I was a answering his questions. He had questions. And we were just having a nice dialogue. Uh, talking and then uh, he 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 said, "Man, I was." I said, "How do you how do you feel being in here like now? How do you feel how do you feel knowing that you're not in a bomb making factory now, right?" And, right. and he said, "I feel good. I feel I feel you know I feel uh, good." I said, "How did you feel the first time you came here?" He said, "He was like he was scared to death." <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, totally. And so I couldn't. So what? What? When I heard that, I said, "This fear is real. People have become victims to the fear and hate machine." So that's why I commend you when you, you when 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 you said, "I really, you know, you you want to uh, help people to stop with this hate," and that's due to the ignorance. So this man, he didn't know, but so naturally now you're going to do things out of not knowing, out of ignorance, and now that fear, it's a repetitive cycle. You know, fear, ignorance, then the hate, and the violence, and it's just never ending. Then the wars. Yeah, and the fear is from the devil. It's like it's it's his best tool, you know. Just to, just that that fear, that that terror, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, it, another thing that opened my eyes was finding out how many of these uh, terrorists being arrested, blah blah blah, were people of uh, that they manipulated. Like a lot of them had like autism, and they'd like try and get them to make a bomb, and they were mm -hmm. like trying to. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, it reminded me a lot of the war on drugs, where it'd be like um, these undercover agents would try and make their quotas and they'd go in and try and get someone that didn't have any friends and might be a little on the spectrum. And then they'd, they'd arrest and be like, oh, look, we got another one. And it's like, it's fascinating to me to see that, to just see how much we were manipulated and how much we shouldn't be continuing these wars that just are leading to the debt of America. Because, you know, to end the fear, to end the hate will help all Americans. Because 22 trillion in debt, because we're in a land that we don't need to be in, you know, if we're not, this is, this is another thing, is the wars never end unless people colonize. So what do you do? You kill a bunch of people, you don't have children, you don't open up shops, you don't bring churches, then they just come back, except they're just more hardcore than before. And it's just an endless nonsense waste of life. And, um, you know, I remember when I was young, my brother had a couple uh, Saudi Arabian friends that he met when he went to school in England. And they came to visit us. It was Fahad and Abdul, and they were Muslim. And they were very, very nice. And when I was a little kid, I wove cloth. I remember I just had this one cloth, and I just gave it to one of them as a uh, – I was like, oh, this could be a prayer rug. And he was like, oh, thank you. That's so cool. And then I forgot about those guys as the media machine cranked up the hate and the rage and the fear and stuff. And now looking back, they were some of the nicest people I knew, you know, and, and it's like, and OK, for example, this show, like I told a couple of people I was doing this and some people were like, oh, Muslims. Oh. And I'm like, dude, I did Joe Rogan three times. He's a freaking Satanist. You know, it's like, where were all these people when I did Joe Rogan? I'm like, he believes in Satan. I'm like. Muslims say, Jesus, peace be upon him. You know, they believe in the same God. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, they added prophets, blah, blah. I'm like, so are Mormons. How, where's your rage against Mormons? And they're like, well, I'm like, yeah, because you weren't trained to hate Mormons. And I'm like, get in control of your own life, your own brain. You know what I'm saying? So you mentioned training. So you think that that's, that's a, a deliberate training, uh, uh, the mass man manipulation 
where oh, you, know it is. You, you talk about now being enslaved. Now people yeah. being enslaved because of this fear and giving up their now not only money four point how much almost five four point five five trillion dollars in all these uh, senseless uh, wars and then just giving up your civil liberties and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it it hurts the person. You know, the people that think I'm crazy for saying Muhammad, peace be upon him. At first I was doing it just to piss off baby boomers, but now I've started to really be like, it just feels better to say peace be upon people that others respect. Like if Muslims can say Jesus, peace be upon him, why can't you say peace be upon who they respect? It's just like an act of, um, you know, it's just offering someone tea or taking your shoes off at the door. It doesn't cost you anything to just show respect if someone's being a nice man. And then the, the rage... And I'm like, that rage, you might as well have the gun pointing at you every bullet you shoot because, you know, these people are capitalizing on your hate, your unjust hatred for human beings. You know, it's one thing if, if you're against the flooding of, uh, you know, the open borders. Or you don't want your community to go from Christian to Muslim or something like that. That's fine. But if you are against just them doing what they're doing and you feel you have the right to go there and bomb their their wedding it's like you're a ghoul. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I uh, and and I'm glad I know this now. So one, one thing I'm fortunate to have is I don't feel shame when I learn something new. Some people, they have this trigger where if they were wrong about something, they won't admit it because they don't want to look stupid. Yeah. And yeah. I don't have that. I just don't. I'm like, yeah, I've learned that um, Islam is not as far away from Christianity as I once thought it was. It, Talmudic Judaism is way farther. You know, and these are the people that I would see, I would see, um, um, you know, Steven Crowder having on Ben Shapiro on a show. Meanwhile, he's given me uh, grief for questioning the moon landing. And I'm like, buddy, that guy thinks Jesus Christ was a criminal. And it's like, this isn't making logical sense to me. And so I'm glad I've uh, thought more about it. And I'm not uh, as angry about it. You mentioned the word also uh, Allah er earlier. Many people don't know that if you're, uh, if you read the Arabic Christian Bible, uh, if you're a Jew or a Christian and you, and you open up Genesis right there, you have almost, I believe, 17 times the word Allah is mentioned. Uh, Arabs and Jews who are Arabic speaking, they, they use the word Allah. In Aramaic, uh, Allah, Elohim, you know, these are the Semitic languages because, you know, the, lang the English language didn't exist. So, you know, see when people, because they think, you know, the propaganda, Allah, some moon god, you know, something, you know, uh, some pagan god. But this is, this is just uh, the creator's name in, in uh, what we say in Arabic, in German, Gut, in Spanish, Dios, right? In English, God. Yeah, I mean, I am who am. It's pretty powerful. You know, that's what a Muslim told me. I don't know if that's really what it means, but I, I heard that Allah means uh, I am who am. Is that what that translates to? Okay, Allah, the God, the only one worthy of worship. You can call, Allah says, you can call him by any of his beautiful, all the beautiful names to uh, belong to Allah. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the most gracious, the most merciful, Al-Wadud, the loving, the just, the compassionate. You know, uh, so these are, he has uh, 99 uh, uh, names mentioned in, 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 um, in the Quran and what we call the Sunnah. Uh, so any one of these names, uh, some have said that uh, Yahweh, you know, the ever-living, right? This would be one of his attributes. So by any one of these names, uh, one can connect with, with his creator. Say uh, the, the opening chapters of the Quran start with, uh, in the name of God Almighty, Allah, you translate it, the most gracious, the most merciful. See? Yeah, that's but, cool. It's all about gratitude. Yeah, it's, it's being, being grateful and thankful. You mentioned uh, that anything, anyone that Ben Shapiro hates that much, there's got to be some, <laughs> some good there, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's another thing that started to get me to, like, not, you know, rethink Muslims is he's such a little, just such a little twerp, just such a little war-crazy little monster that uh, whenever he really hates something, I have to think there's something good there. You know, because he's such a lying chicken hawk. You know, he's trying to start all these wars that he won't fight in, that he can't even justify. And all he does is lie and scheme. And so when he would talk down about Islam, it made me think like, well, there must be something to like about these guys or else Ben Shapiro wouldn't despise them. You know, mm -hmm. when, when you but you you um. When you when you go down these different rabbit holes, I just had a uh, Dr. Kevin Barrett, 
on the program. And we talked about one, one of these other things that, uh, because uh, Joe Rogan, he actually, he brought it up uh, with, uh, with one of his guests. They, start talk, they started to talk about the, um, what's the reason, you know, these people hate us so much. And, you know, and then they started to talk about 9-11, like, you know, they're over there. They got nothing better to do. They're planning for some, you know, they're just sitting around, you know. And I mentioned, man, these people are out there eating. They're like, like you out there. They got goats and sheep. They don't got TV and they're minding their own business. Like they got nothing better to do. Like they want to just come over here and they just can't wait to start. And then, then we started to go deeper into building seven architects and engineers. I don't know if you know about this. Do you? Have you gone down that rabbit hole? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, it's such <laughs> nonsense. It's like, first off, you got to think that these people, just like what you're describing. I mean, if I'm hanging out with, with a lot of these Muslims over there, we're talking goats. We're talking what's the best kind of goat, how to milk a goat, <laughs> just how men talk. Yeah. But like the, the lie is that these people are like, oh, they're so free over there. I just hate it so much. And so then they get box cutters from like Staples. They, they hijack a... A Boeing 747, even though they can't fly a prop plane, they do something no pilot can, has ever been able to do. And then they drop buildings that can't drop by this method. And then building seven just, it's all such nonsense. But the way trauma-based mind control works, you know, I'm fascinated by wizardry because my dad is a rhetoric professor, like how uh, to basically do a spell, like mass communications is a spell. And so the trauma of it was so big that it made people almost give them a Stockholm syndrome. And then the uh, the media was ready to go with bin Laden, bin Laden, bin Laden, bin Laden. You know, that name was ready within 20 minutes, just boom. And so the narrative had been painted and the naivety of people uh, to just believe what they're told by authorities made them rightfully so have a hatred for the people who did it. You know, I'm from New York State, not New York City, but... People knew firefighters that died. People knew people that got cancer. Like you saw these buildings crumble and you felt, you know, part of me wanted to join the military and go, you know, against the people who did it. And looking back, it's so stupid. It's such a rabbit trick. It's just so, you know, false flag doesn't even begin to describe it. And when people are like, oh, you question the 9-11 narrative, it's like, how does anyone not question that? There's no pilot alive that thinks that that was possible by these men. You couldn't hijack the planes that way. None of the black boxes survived, but yet the men's passports just fell down from the sky. And then a good Samaritan picked it up. And lo and behold, it's exactly who the media thinks did it. And it's like, we're such dupes. And a lot of people won't admit it because of the blood that's been spilled in these unnecessary and ridiculous wars. But if you can't admit you were tricked, you'll be tricked forever, you know? And, and it's like, if you can't admit that, what are you going to do with your life? You know, if you can't admit, because some of these lies are so big that people can't handle it. You know, I used to be an agnostic. I used to think that, um, I used to believe in evo like uh, evolution and that we're all just from particles and genitalia smashing together for billions of years. And when I realized that wasn't true, because it doesn't make any logical sense anymore, I didn't feel shame. You know, so many of these people, they don't want to admit they were wrong. And I think that comes from the lie. You know, it's satanic. It's like, you don't matter. You are created by your, cre it's like when you, when you find something true, you have to speak it and go with it or else you're lost, you know? Do you think it becomes, the bottom line now becomes more, it's more profits over people. It's more about just trending, fitting in because it's not cool now. It's not cool like what you're doing now, you know, coming out and speaking like this. Now, now uh, uh, it's not the coolest thing to do because there's there's um, a quota. There's, um, uh, you know, like the sheep, people are just following. And now, now you're going against the grain. You're going against the odds. Why is that? Well, it's a lack of masculinity. Lack of it's, masculinity. Yeah. It's a lack of men saying that's wrong. I like you that. You know, it's like um, it goes God, man, woman, child, and that isn't about subjugation. It's just a, it's just what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. God guides and protects man who serves God, and then a, a man will protect and guide his wife who protects and guides the child, and then the child in some way reinvigorates God, you know? And, um, and so 
men have to be the ones that say, no, that's wrong. It's like, yeah, but all the people are going to hit a thumbs down on the Internet. It's like, I am a man. I, I'm not motivated by that. You know, that's that's more of how women are, because, you know, it, the, the hunter versus the gatherer, you know, women that are picking berries and braiding hair and all that stuff. It's like when their community turns on them, they feel incredible fear. And, you know, they, they, they I, oh, man, I wish I could just play the stand up bit I did. But about how men are uh, capitalist, women are communists, where, you know, when when a woman is having a bad time at a bar, you know, when there's like a group of women out, everyone's having fun, but one girl's having a bad time. It's like, oh no, Brian's here with his new girl. All the other girls are like, Tina's sad. We all got to go home. Wick her tears. You know, get on a unicorn. And men are like, if, if a man's like, I'm really sad. It's like, get out of here. You know, we're having a good time. But the opposite's true where if a man's really fast and strong or true or right, it's like, he's my leader. That's my captain. He's the fastest man. I love that guy. And women are like, she's the prettiest. Tell everybody she has herpes. You know, it's about bringing down the, the high and raising up the low because women are more into that, that type of living. And men are the ones that have to be the ones that say, this is wrong. You know, if you allow lies to propagate in your community, everyone dies. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't build strong fences, the weasel gets in and kills your chickens. If you don't, uh, you know, admit what's really happening, your goats die, your wife dies, your children die. And so the man has to be the one that takes those arrows and bullets where people are like, oh, it's not cool. Oh, that's not very popular. It's like, why would I care? It's not true. And so without a strong man that speaks truth, the woman is cursed. That's why you see women taking on roles of men. You know, they're, they're, they're in these cubicles as wage slaves, killing their own children, you know, cursing men because men have become women. Men are just watching pornography in their mom's basements complaining that life isn't easy enough for them. And it's like men need to have gratitude. That's what I love about Muslims is you guys have gratitude towards the God. You're like the, the merciful, the provider, you know. And when a man does that, they can actually lead a woman. And then the woman doesn't have to be some weird hybrid of male, female, which is oddly like the Satan, you know, this mm -hmm. weird genderless, you know, resentful goat. Yeah. And so yeah. it, it's like the masculine energy has to has to stay strong. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is really missing is is just these men who act like women and who want approval and fancy clothes, you know, lollipops and fancy pants. And women then will act like men until an, a, a, a man with masculine energy comes in and provides and protects and guides. Yeah. And that allows her to be a mother to your child. And if that isn't honored, if the man doesn't honor God and if the woman doesn't honor the man, then you don't have a lineage. You are a fallen people. And we're seeing that in, in places like Sweden and stuff like that. And people just want to complain about Muslims and stuff where it's like, oh, the Muslims. It's like, it's like, oh, they burned down the church. It's like, why, why wasn't a man at the church? Like, why wasn't a man protecting the church? Where were you? Home watching pornos? And they're like, boo-hoo. It's like, no, be a man. Be masculine. Protect. If you don't have value in it, God will take it right back in the form of ashes, you know? What do you, what do you think? What, um, we, we did some uh, programs after uh, people were bringing to our attention, uh, Joe Rogan in particular, he had, he had talked about some things uh, many times with many guests. He was bringing on guests and they were, they were making some major blunders saying Islam is this, Islam is that, da, da, da. So, I brought, so I brought on some academics, people especially imams, sheikhs. And then we covered him. All, all of these points they brought up systematically, uh, academically. We didn't insult him. We didn't, you know, push hate towards him. We just said, "Hey, this is the truth." And why don't you bring on an academic? Bring on someone like you did. What you did said, "Hey, guys," and, and these trolls are out there, and you're like, you know, a racist. You're like, tell you know, tell them slow down. Hey, hey, I'll bring an imam on here, man. I'll bring an imam, and he'll answer the question. And if he's not truthful, da, da, da. I'll do a whole thing. Right? I'll have a f imam on here. And we'll talk it out. We'll talk about, I will have you guys email me specific sections and we'll have someone explain it. And if we catch them lying, we, we never have to f it again. You know, you said that. Why, why won't like Louder, Louder, what's name, Louder Crowder or Joe Rogan, instead of talking about Muslims, bring a Muslim on and let's answer, let's talk, let's dialogue. Because they're magicians. I mean, they're, they're lying.
You know, that's why when people say, oh, are you Muslim now on? Because you're friendly about my, I'm like, I'm confident enough in my faith that I can talk, I can be friends with you because I, I think you're honest. I like you. Thank and you. it's like, if, if a Christian or a Satanist like Joe Rogan um, is uncomfortable around a Muslim and won't let a Muslim speak about their faith, it means they're liars and they already know they're wrong, which mm -hmm. I think is a huge sin. If you know you're wrong and you won't let someone clear their name, uh, you're you're just a horrible person. And so, I'm not scared of the truth. I'm not scared of 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 that. And some people are. Some people they say they won't let anyone speak their side because if they will, they'll they'll be crushed. And I think that's ridiculous, you know. And if and if I, if I'm painting a picture about somebody and I'm wrong, I would want that person to be able to clear it up. And so uh, a lot of people watched when you when you talked about me on your show and they were really touched by it because a lot of Christians think that Muslims just hate them, you know, and, and so to see you, um, you know, laugh about one of my videos and talk about me and not demonize me, you got to understand a lot of Christians think that Muslims just despise them and hate Jesus and all this stuff. And it just isn't true. And without, uh, uh, you know, I'm blessed to have a low level of fear naturally, I think, but a lot of people have too much fear to even explore these ideas and understand that it, it's, it's all been a big lie, you know? And so I'm glad that, uh, that people like you exist to just say, well, let's just get on and we'll talk about it, you know? Yeah. Make the human connection talk. I mean, uh, that's the start, man. But you know, these things, uh, the people who don't want peace are the people that, uh, that, that they don't profit, you know, they don't profit from there being peace. So I know myself, I try to have peace with the creator. I have, that brings peace with myself. Then I can go ahead and, and, and give that out to others. We say, peace be with you. You know what yeah. I mean? That's the greeting of Jesus. We, we say, peace be upon him. The uh, Prophet Muhammad, he said, you know, worship the most merciful and spread peace, you know? So uh, w uh, when we say we're people of peace, we literally mean it. And of course, every human being has a right to defend themselves. You know, we're not, uh, you be a man, you know, you, you, you guard your home, you guard your property. You have a right to defend yourself and your home and your property, what, not in self-defense, but killing innocent human beings. And this whole thing that's been painted out like Muslims are like the boogeyman and they just have fangs ready to attack. This is all nonsense, yeah. and I'm glad that someone like you has seen through the media hype and, and and all the all the nonsensical things that I said. I commend you. God bless you, and I I, I really um I'm, I'm this just popped in my head. Profits over profits. What is it? <laughs> I, that just came in my head. That could be a good slogan. Profits with a ph over profits with an f. Yeah, profits. <laughs> People worshiping Pro the doc. Worshiping the money, worshiping materialism, and forgetting about this, 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 uh, you know, um, uh, human connection that we just made. And hopefully, we could be a good example for others to follow. Because I don't think I really, I know. I mean, when you have that hate inside, it, 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 it's, it doesn't feel good like the love. It, like when you, when you do something like this, that hate builds up, and you just end up stressed out. You end up uh, oh, you're full yeah, of man. hate, and 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 you're gonna end up uh, getting sick from that. That actually make you and sick. The, and there's two roads, you know. You, someone, uh. Someone pointed out, I was like, in one of my streams, I said I was crumbling upwards. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's two roads. There's a road where you start stripping yourself of your, of your bad habits and your sins and your hate, you know, because I had some, some family stuff this year that really was just, it made me um, have some hate. And, uh, and it helped, it actually helped me burn off the dead wood and made me see, you know, um, you know, like praying for your enemy is really important. And I had that with, um, with uh, you know, people and, and someone in my family. And so that helped me actually see people like Muslims is not my enemy, like an honest Muslim versus, you know, it, it's weird how sometimes horrible things in your life can help you get rid of the hate and then let you smile and let you feel grateful for being alive and in that moment. And um, yeah, some you, you're always welcome over here, man. Me and you can milk goats. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. I might take you up on that. Same thing here. If you're if you're in the in the uh, in the area, let's let's stay in touch. I really enjoyed talking to you, and most important, I commend you. You know, from some of the beautiful things that you've said, and and hopefully some people can 
can you know uh, benefit from that. More people can learn to you know um, see past the the media manipulation and, and this yeah. blind hate that they uh, are perpetuating. Exactly, brother. Yeah. So peace be upon you. So is that peace what be you with said? you, brothers. Peace, peace be, be with, with you so. also. Salam alaikum. <laughs> And that was Owen Benjamin here on The Dean Show. Thank you, Owen. It was a pleasure having you on. And these talks are so important because, as he said, you've been trained to think a certain thing when we hear Muslims are Islam. Is the boogeyman coming to get you? You think about 9-11, never forget. Yeah, never forget that Islam and Muslims had nothing to do with 9-11. What is a Muslim? Because when you know what Islam is and what a Muslim is supposed to be, then you can understand, oh, you're going to question twice as we do. There's no way that a Muslim can be doing such things. Yeah, some Muslims drink alcohol. They're not supposed to. Some Muslims deal in usury interest. They're not supposed to. Islam says one thing. A Muslim might go ahead and do the opposite, just like some Christian might do the opposite. You don't judge a car by the drunk driver. So now when you know what Islam is, is to submit your will to the creator of the heavens and earth. And this is how you have peace in life. That's how you acquire peace. And a Muslim is one who does the action of Islam by submitting your will to the Creator, to heavens and earth. And it's in the Lord's Prayer. O our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That means I'm going to do what you want me to do. The one who created me has a right to tell me what to do and how to be successful in this life and the next. So now this is the main thing of Islam. It came to free the human being from worshiping a stick, stone, a bone, a human being, angels, saints. No, to worship just the one God, the Creator, of the heavens and the earth. And to free human beings from the being enslaved to this material world. To the vastness, from the restrictiveness of this life to the vastness of the next. And you can't get that by harming innocent human beings. By being a, a person of violence, of terror. No way, man. So anytime someone throws something at you from the Quran, read it in context. So when you know what Islam is, you'll know what Islam isn't. And this is the same way of life. That was sent throughout time that all the messengers of God, since the beginning of the first man, Adam, Noah, Moses, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, David, Jesus, peace be upon them all. And the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them, they all came with Islam, calling hum humanity to submit their will to the creator of the heavens and earth and to do good, righteous deeds. If you make a mistake, turn to the all-loving, the most forgiving, and repent. You're going to fall short. And it's not because of your good deeds you get to paradise. It's because of God's mercy. But this is a manifestation of your faith. Now, you'll have some haters, hate provocateurs, they'll take the penal code of Islam. That's about 1% of Islam. They forget about to teach you about the rest. And they'll throw this out there like Owen had mentioned. The Fox News and all these, Brent Hart and the CNN, they'll throw certain things out there to scare you. But the majority of things that are lies, misinformation, things. And if it's a half-truth, it's a lie. So now come to the Muslims. Come learn. Go ahead. Let's have a dialogue. Ask sincerely if you're in genuine. You're just trying to throw stones. Be careful. You might be in a glass house. And now if someone throws something out there and we talked about the penal code, act as a, acts as a strong deterrent to keep the criminals in check. You have a police force. You have the army. When things now need to be taken to a next level to put these people in check, you have this, of course. But look at it. Read it in context. Look at it from an academic standpoint. Have someone explain it to you. Don't just take it. You know, Time Magazine did an article exposing in a span of 150 years that over 60,000 books were written against Islam. So you, that was before Facebook and Twitter and all this stuff. And now if you're going constantly, you're going to go ahead and become what you read. You're going to go ahead and read all of this negative propaganda. Go to a mosque, sit with a Muslim and ask, say, hey, look, man. What does this mean when you talk about kafir? What does it mean when, hey, chopping off the hand? What We don't run from this thing, but look at the context, what we said. Look at the context, how it's established, when. But know that anything that God ordained, there's wisdom in it. That it's for the mercy of humanity. And imagine if aliens came from outer space. And now they wanted to know, just imagine. And they wanted to know about the U.S., the, the Constitution. And then you just show, show them the penal code electric chair, lethal injection, hanging. What kind of impression would they have? And you forgot about all the other beautiful things that are in the Constitution. That's the same thing. I'll equate that with Islam. All you've been exposed to is some of the penal code, things out of context. And now, no, no wonder that you have this fear and apprehension. So make the connection. Go ahead and continue to open your mind as Owen did. We respect that we have some differences. Islam, we love. We love for Owen Benjamin, and we love for the viewers. We love, and this is out of out of out of out of love.
that we'd love for you to accept Islam, submission to the will of the Creator, not the creation. We love that. And this is not like, you know, coming at it from a point like, hey, we're better than you, putting down. It's like somebody who would love some good for you, who's inviting you to the uh, house of peace, Dal Islam. That's the house of peace. We'd love it. But at the end, if someone chooses not to accept, hey, still, it's like someone who really wants to invite you over, you know, uh, to, to, the, to something beautiful. You respect that. Say, look, I, I, I can't accept that invitation, but you'd appreciate that that person reached out. For the invite. So we give the invite. But if someone doesn't want to accept, hey, doesn't mean they have to be hostile. You have people in your own home that you don't agree with. You have people in your own home, in your family, that have different views. So we can go ahead and part on these views and collaborate and other good things that we agree upon. But how are we going to make the world a better place of peace? That we acknowledge some of these differences. We respect each other. And we move on. But, as Owen was talking about also... Who doesn't want the peace, the war machine, people who profit from there being war? So let's not be naive. Let's not fall for these trips and tra traps. Thank you again, Owen Benjamin, for being with us. And thank you all for tuning in to The Dean Show. We'll see you next time. Tune in every week for a new and exciting show. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you can be updated. And we started with peace and the greeting of Jesus and all the prophets. Peace be upon them and peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.